All right, we're going to be looking at something called the central dogma of biology. It sounds very strange. It sounds um, almost really stubborn. The central dogma, the dogmatic belief of biology. But it was named this, um, and there's good reason. And so far, everything we know about biology seems to be accurate about this particular thing. So uh, we're going to summarize what the central dogma of biology is. This is just going to be an overview and then in subsequent videos we're going to break down the actual details and actually understand how this works molecularly. So as a quick review you should know already that there, there's something called DNA and there's something called RNA. They are both nucleic acids. There are some basic differences. Uh, DNA, we learn about this actually for replication of DNA. RNA plays a very tiny role, but it doesn't really, in replication, it doesn't really show what RNA is fully capable of, which we're going to see here. So one main difference you should know is that DNA is double-stranded, where RNA is single-stranded. The D in there, it's not what it stands for, but it helps me remember that. And another thing that the D helps me understand and remember is that in DNA, we have deoxyribose sugar, whereas in RNA, it's ribose sugar as part of the nucleotide. And this is very important for understanding the central dogma of biology, what we're going to talk about here, um, is that in RNA, there is U for uracil instead of T for thymine. So the four bases in DNA are A, T, C, and G, whereas the four bases that are in RNA are A, U, C, and G. And we're going to see an example of that. So, okay, forget about this big term, central dogma of biology. What is the point of DNA? So... You could pause the video and think about that for a while. What is the purpose of DNA? And most people will say something like, well, it uh, makes us who we are. It has our genetic information. It has our genes, whatever these things, uh, genes, whatever they actually are. So all of that is, is true. Um, but how does the DNA in my cells make me who I am? And that is what the central dogma of biology is. In general, it's very simple. It's a few steps here, um, big picture wise, but in the small details get really, really important. And then that's relevant for all the new biological discoveries. The Nobel Prize given out to Mr. Shinya Yamanaka recently for um, discovery or invention of iPS cells, induced pluripotent cells. So that all that turning genes off, activating genes and making them actually make cells carry out specific directions. So here is the basic idea of what the central dogma is. The idea is that in our cells, in, our, in the nuclei of our cells, we have all our DNA locked away. That DNA is like the blueprint. It contains all the information, all of our genes. Every single one of our cells has all the instructions, all the genes to carry out every single thing that our body can possibly do. But we've learned before that if I'm a skin cell, for example, even though as a skin cell, I have all the instructions capable of making me turn into something else, I only am going to carry out, read like the pages of instructions that make me a skin cell. So you can kind of think of it like that. Every cell has the entire instruction manual, but depending on the type of cell it is, it's only going to read the pages that are relevant to help it, do, to help it actually do its job. Um, and the, the idea here is that the DNA, when we, if these are the pages of the book, when we open up DNA and we read all the letters, A, T, C, G, C, C, G, T, T, A, that that will be a set of instructions to produce a protein. And a protein makes it sound really, really general, like, uh, doesn't our body have many more things besides proteins? But the fact is that most of the things that do things in our body, most of the objects that do things in our body are proteins and they include everything like all these things that we see here. Hormones, enzymes, antibodies, structural proteins, this is, these are all proteins. These are all proteins. And proteins are all made up of amino acids. You should know this before from macromolecules and the small things that make them up. Um, so we're basically getting from DNA and then turning into proteins. Now along the way, there's a little message. You can think about it like these are the main blueprints locked away inside the nucleus down here. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to destroy the original blueprint. So they get locked up. But when I need to send a message out to make a protein, what I'll do is I'll go into the main office here in the nucleus. 
and I'll make a photocopy of the instructions from the master instruction booklet. And that photocopy is actually RNA. So make a photocopy of the actual instructions, the correct sequence of these letters, A's, T's, C's, and G's, and that's the RNA. And the RNA will then be used to uh, read the instructions, even though it's a copy of the original instructions, to produce the protein that I want. So something like uh, you've heard of salivary amylase. Amylase is an enzyme that's in your mouth that helps to break down starch into maltose. That is a protein made up of amino acids. The instructions to make that were originally coded in the DNA, but some RNA was used to actually produce um, that salivary amylase molecule. Uh, what do we call these two processes? When we go from DNA to RNA, it's like taking the instructions and making a copy. So we're actually transcribing that. This is really small, but it fits in the box. Transcription is the process where DNA turns into RNA. When I take RNA and I actually have to read the instructions and turn it into proteins, well, RNA is a nucleic acid. Proteins are made up of amino acids, totally different uh, structural components. So it's like we're almost translating this into another type of thing. So this process is called translation. Okay, a little large in the box, but that'll work. That's the central dogma of biology, the idea that everything's coded for in the DNA, and it will be, when read out, it will read, read out instructions to produce the proteins, but to get there, we go from DNA transcribed to RNA, translated into proteins. Here's a visual look uh, at what this kind of looks like here. So here's the nucleus we said. Here's your DNA double helix kind of wrapped up like we have shown here. And you learned that if I do DNA replication, when I'm replicating DNA, I have to unzip the DNA. And a molecule called helicase does that. Well, when I'm doing this process, the central dogma or reading instructions in order to produce proteins, I also unzip the DNA. More on that in some of the more advanced videos. But when I unzip the DNA here, I'm going to see that there are just a chain of letters. And that's what a gene is. A gene is simply just a chain of letters that codes for something. So if I'm trying to make salivary amylase, then there is a specific section in on one of the chrom chromosomes, uh, and the chromosomes are made up of DNA, and that a gene is basically a section, a string of letters. Remember that a gene is a string of letters that's found in the DNA that codes for a single protein codes for a single protein. So there it is, my DNA, unzipped. That's my gene. That gene uh, codes for salivary amylase, but I can't cut out this DNA. I don't want to cut out my original instructions. So what I do is I make a copy of it. You see this uh, red line here is a copy. And if I look really closely, can you see? I'm trying to make this match up. If there's a G over there, oops, that's, that's not very clear. Let's use this one. If there's a T over here, there's going to be an A over here. If there's a G over here, there's a C over here. This is just called complementary base pairing. It's the same thing when we're copying DNA. Um, remember, the only difference, though, is RNA does not have Ts in it. So RNA has Us in places of Ts. So when there's an A on the DNA, the complementary base pair should be a T, but uracil is the uh, structural equivalent of a U. Sorry, uracil U is the structural equi equivalent uh, of a T in RNA. So anyways, there's your message that's been read and it's been copied. So this is the photocopy and we call this uh, RNA, but later on we're going to encounter a few different types of RNA. So right now let's just throw the M onto it. So we're calling it mRNA, which stands for uh, messenger RNA. And it makes sense because this is our copy and it's going to be our message. So there it is after it detaches, there's the mRNA, this little worm thing. This worm thing is going to travel and as it travels, it's going to leave the nucleus and it's going to go to a factory. Well, what do we do with this RNA? Well, this RNA needs to be translated into a protein. What's going to do that? Well, if I remember from basic cell organelles 101, the protein factories of the cell are called ribosomes. So here, there are the little dots right here. So there's a ribosome. Let's get this out of the way. What's literally going to happen is this Messenger RNA is going to read through, it's going to run through the ribosome like a typewriter. And as it reads through, it's going to be translated into a protein. It's going to be translated into a protein. And uh, in the next video, we're going to see really quickly how that actually 
works out. So this basically feeds through here. And uh, the simple way you can think of it, every three letters codes for one amino acid. Remember, protein is made up of amino acids. So every three letters, we're going to see later, that's called a codon. You can write it down now. Every three letters codes for one amino acid. So literally, uh, there's a ribosome, that white dot. Here is the mRNA, and as it feeds through, there's going to be some other little molecules that help out, but every three letters is going to produce, so these string of dots, is each dot represents an amino acid. Every three letters, one amino acid. So think of it going, you know, tick, 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 one, tick, 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 another added, tick, 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 another added, tick, 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 another added. Then you have a chain of amino acids. Well, what, what do you get when you have a chain of amino acids? Well, if you fold it up, fold it up over here, it turns into a protein. And there is your uh, salivary amylase. That could be salivary amylase that's now used in the cell. But this happens so much. There's so many of these, these copies of, of mRNA that are coming out. And so it's not just one, there's a bunch of these. And you've got tons of ribosomes. So in a very short amount of time, you can generate tons and tons of these actual little molecules. So your cells become filled with this enzyme and the enzyme gets secreted and gets into your saliva and it helps you to do some digestion. That's the overall idea of the central dogma. So uh, we're going to look into more detail later and then we'll jump into the higher level materials and break all of this, the specifics down. Okie dokes.